Hey there, beer tubers. Welcome back to Maxwell Stars Beer Review. Tonight, very, very special night. I'm in a good mood. If anybody doesn't know why, look up the news right now. Anyway, so speaking of which, I'm going to do, because I'm in a good mood, I'm going to do a very special celebration beer, which I've been saving for eight years. Eight years. This is... A Unibrew 17 Grand Reserve 2012 version. Holy shit. And yes, I've, I've had this in my cellar the whole time. I'm, I actually kind of hope it's still good. All right. So uh, still got the, even got the tag on here saying it was uh, like one of the top beers of the world or something. Burl Beer Championship, Chicago, USA in 2011. Platinum medal winner 2009, 2010, 2011. Uh, anyways, again, like a little spiel on here. Unibrew is, of course, a brewery out of Chambly, Quebec, which is, I think, like an hour, half an hour to hour from Montreal. Um, inspired by the centuries-old Belgian tradition of Trappist monks, Unibrew 17 was first brewed in 2007 to celebrate our 17th anniversary. Winner of three consecutive international platinum medals and awarded the title of best dark ale in the world, Cheers, Kent. Cheers, Craig. Um, and when it was well over three years old, we knew we had to brew more. This uh, French oak-aged bottle from re-fermented dark ale has a remarkable and complex flavor profile. Its Grand Reserve appellation is fitting endorsement for its exceptional aging quality. Brewed once a year and in individually numbered Brasseur bottles, Brew, brew 17 Grand Reserve promises to be a true delight for the specially beer enthusiast and what do they actually classify this as so it's classified as a Belgian strong dark ale so think like Rochefort well no uh, Rochefort 8 or uh, um, Chimay Bleu Cap or something like that so it's very much in the vein of that sort of Belgian style now because of the age of this beer I have have a uh, roll of paper towel handy in case this thing gets lively I also have my Z stem uh, the Yurt the Takumuri gave me. Oh man, it's like, man, it's like that. You know, like that feeling you get from old corroded metal that's been around for a long time. Like, uh, uh, it's got that feeling on the on the on the the, the, uh, the cage. So, oh, I'm not sure. I'm hoping this doesn't blow up in my face. No. And looking right there, you actually see, I wonder if I can pull up to the camera. Uh, I kind of see it faintly on the cap where it says 0512. So this was bottled in uh, May of 2012. Oh. Mm, interesting. I was expecting maybe a little bit more pop than that. I'm hoping it's uh, not, still got carbonation. Give me a second here. I... I was I would have to uh, pull out a corkscrew. Yeah, let's try reefing on it one more time. Nope. Yeah, uh, I haven't popped a cork in years. Yeah, me neither. It's been seven years for me as well. Um, oh, all right, corkscrew. Pop the my cork. Pop that in there. And I hope this doesn't blow up on me because I'm more putting it. Holy shit. That bastard's in there. Um, well, this could be a short-lived review. Uh, let me screw it in tighter. Oh, shit. Damn, sons. Whew. That was in there. Mm. 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 So it's slightly vinous. I'm hoping it's not spoiled. So let's. Uh, I have heard hit or miss things. Although um, most recent reviews I've seen of the 2012 variation of this on on tapped have been pretty like good. So I'm optimistic that it's okay. But the uh, top of it smells a little bit funky. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take a second glass. Pour the little U at the top off. So that I get the good stuff in the bottom. Pour that out here. 
Well, it does have carbonation. That's a good sign. Ooh, beautiful color on it. Nice golden. Well, not golden. Um, nice rich amber brown kind of color with a brown head. Tan brown head. Hey, Rod. Cheers, man. How you doing? Tell me, let us know what you're drinking. Same to you, Craig. What are you drinking? Yeah, looking at that. Um, I gotta say that it doesn't look as dark as like other other uh, other uh, beers of its style. If you're calling us a uh, strong dark ale, uh, build a strong dark ale. It's not as dark as like I would expect from a Chimay Blue or a uh, um, uh, Rochefort Eight that we just did on beer analysis earlier this week. It looks nice though. Um, I will give it credit for that. It definitely looks like a very inviting Belgian styled brew. So let's give it a whiff. Ooh. So there's some tartness there. Again, that kind of makes me uh, worried about whether this kept or not. It's got that kind of like almost uh, vinous character. Underneath that, though, I'm getting like notes of uh, dark fruits and and um, touch woody chocolate. Very very mellow. Mmm, it's actually kind of nice. It smells like kind of like raisins and a hint of cinnamon. Oh, I say it's high time to put her down the hatch. Cheers. Oh, God, yes. Oh, my fuck, that held up beautifully. So looking at the comments here, it looks like Dan is there drinking a 2018 Cafe Del Bastardo tonight. Awesome. Rajay is saying, drinking a high wire oak chocolate macaroon 10W40. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Oh, yeah. That is smooth. Full of dark fruits. Like raisins, plums, figs. It's got light, mellow amount of spice and actually a very potent amount of spice considering this thing is eight years old. Like, and I am impressed at how spicy this is for being that aged of a beer. It's uh, also peppery. And it's got some nice drying oak tannin qualities. that fades into this nice milk chocolate in the back of the palate. Milk chocolate and raisins in the finish. Wow. And usually, if you drink a beer that was, it's aged, but it, it probably shouldn't have been aged, you kind of get this weird, off, uh, kind of balsamic kind of flavor. This doesn't have that. This isn't there. This aged perfectly. What's the percentage on this, anyway? 10%. Maybe that's part of the reason. But this beer tastes like... Oh, wow. This is actually really, really good. Like, I've had these for eight years. One of the biggest reasons I never got around to drinking them. Well, for one, this is this is a beer I bought before my late fiancé passed. But this is... Uh, so I've been keeping it. But uh, it's kind of been one where... Okay, it was aged on oak. And I heard... Saw some posts a while ago online saying that, oh, they didn't age well because they went they went bad. I'm like, okay, so it's sitting there. I don't know. Is it going to be any good? It's having paper towel here. But uh, there's no worries at all. This thing actually aged gorgeously. Um, this, is, this is one of the best beers I've had this year, and it's a hell of a night to drink this. Like, it comes to the, the flavors and everything you want from a Belgian dark, strong Belgian dark ale. This is, I say this is even better than a Rochefort 8. Um, now, I, I don't know if I would say it's better than like a Rocher 10. But uh, overall, that's got a, a packs a wallop of good flavors. There's some nice like, like bubble gummy, cinnamon, grape, grapey flavors in the back as well. A touch of brine. Oh, that is just beautiful. All righty. So let me get to the comments before I get to my rating. Um, 
Uh, Rajay says, cheers again, Craig, brother. Cheers, Dan. Dan says, I think we're all celebrating tonight. You're damn fucking right we are. Maybe, lol. PA Brew News, Man of the Hour, Pennsylvania Brewer News, Preer's brother. Cheers there, Paul. Uh, cheers, PA, blah, blah, blah. Dylan, can you show the bottle again? Dylan, it is a Unibrew Grand Reserve 17 from the year 2012. Ooh, beautiful bottle. And Paul says, I'm running through Kentucky right now, texting as I go. Half in the bag, firing a gum out the window, but it's okay. I have a mask on. So how, how are you firing a gum out the window when you have a mask on? Does it like get stuck in the mask and then you get that like that gum stuck in your beard and you have to take the fucking mask off and it's like because it's stuck in your beard? Well, we'll uh, pop a beer haul video after I get back to the hotel. Awesome, brother. I look forward to it. All right. So Unibrew Grand Reserve 17. Beautiful beer. Um, what more can I say? I, I There's two things that are amazing about it. Not only is it the taste amazing, but it also held up extremely well for its age. Like I wasn't expect. I was expecting to maybe have it mellowed off a bit too much considering it's eight years old. But this held up gorgeously. So I can't give this any lower than a 4.75 out of 5 because this is fucking good and an amazing night to drink it too. Oh, hell yes. I am going to enjoy the rest of this thing. Alrighty. So, and Western Canadian Beer Reviewer says, I love, them, got the, eh, love the one I got six years ago. So good. They actually age better than I thought they would. And a uh, good thing because I actually have a 2013 bottle too. Should have that one at the same time. Sometime. Yeah, I got that. All right, so I want to thank everybody for watching. Six viewers, wow, just to watch me crack open a uh, beer that I aged too long. So I want to thank, uh, who's here? We got Craig. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Rajay. Nice to see you again, man. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, thanks, Dan. Thanks, Paul. And thanks, Dylan. Who did I miss? Anybody? All right. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll chat with you folks later. Cheers.